all love to receive an encouraging note from a friend. And on one page of the New Testament, we find a very personal letter from Paul to Philemon. This brief note to a friend is full of doctrinal truth and practical help for us all. Open your Bible and your heart today as we come to the book of Philemon. Let's join Scott Pauley now as we study God's Word together. It's marvelous to see how God deals with us as individuals. We're unique to Him. We're special to Him. Uh, He deals with us one-on-one, and at the same time, He connects us to one another. Uh, There are really inseparable truths in the Christian life. Uh, One is that God wants to work in you individually, and the second is that God wants to work uh, with you in the lives of other believers, that you are connected. It's bigger than just you. We're a part of the family of God. We're beginning our study in the little book of Philemon, and I said to you when we introduced it the other day that this is truly a note to a friend. It is a very personal letter written from Paul to a dear friend named Philemon. We'll learn more about their connection in this study. But I would like to point out to you today that immediately at the beginning of this little book of Philemon, and then woven throughout, Paul reminds Philemon that it is not just about him. Listen again to Philemon verse 1. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy our brother, unto Philemon our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia, and Archippus our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Do you see? He's dealing with one Christian man, but he is dealing with this Christian man in the context of, Of the church. In fact, a simple glance at the book of Philemon will reveal that there are five individuals at the opening of the letter, and there are five more at the closing of the letter. And then there's another one woven throughout, which is Onesimus, really, we would say probably the main character of the book, the man who's been forgiven and being restored. And if you look at all of these individuals, they they have one thing in common. Paul repeatedly uses family terms, partner terms. In other words, uh, words like brother, fellow laborer, fellow soldier, fellow prisoner. Uh, What's he doing here? He is reminding uh, this man Philemon that his life and his labor uh, connect to everyone around him. That uh, though God is speaking to him, and it's very personal, God has a word for Philemon, uh, that it's bigger than Philemon. It's the work of God. Uh, This book is a very unlikely but undeniable missionary book. It's a book that reminds us it's not just about us. It's not just about us getting our needs met. And I want you to pay very close attention to one phrase today, found in verse number 2. It is the phrase, the church in thy house. Isn't that an interesting expression, the church in thy house? You know, in some parts of the world, churches have to meet in homes. We refer to those as house churches. And sometimes uh, churches even start in homes. My grandfather started a church many, many decades ago now in the front rooms of their house. That's where it began. And so uh, house churches are nothing new. I'm not advocating that every church should go back to meeting in a house, but I would like to point out to you that in this Roman Empire at this time, Uh, To be connected to the followers of Christ was a dangerous thing. To have a church meeting in your living room put you on the line, and yet Philemon had done just that. When the Bible says the church was in his house, what we take from that is that the church was in his heart because you don't let the church meet in your home if the church isn't first in your house. And so one thing we learn about Philemon is that this man understood something about the importance, the significance of the local New Testament church. And I want to ask you today, do you understand how important the church is to your family, to your spiritual growth, to whatever it is you're dealing with? Uh, Do we understand in this particular age how significant it is that God has connected us to one another? Hebrews 10 uh, speaks a great deal about our connection and our relational uh, aspect with the church uh, when it says things like this, let us consider one another to provoke and to love and good works. Uh, let's exhort one another, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
In other words, we need one another. This is not optional. This is mandatory for a child of God. Uh, If you want to become the Christian God wants you to be, you'll never do that by yourself. No, iron sharpens iron. We need each other, and we all need the Lord. So you may have the church over to your house for a fellowship or a barbecue or an activity or a prayer meeting. Uh, I've spoken in cottage prayer meetings in homes and have very pleasant memories of that. Uh, But the bigger question is this, is your household heart deep in the work of the local New Testament church? Do you understand how important this is? I think there's several aspects to that revealed in the book of Philemon. The first is this, that the church leads you to fellowship. That's part of the reason we need to be together. We need to assemble because you can't fellowship from a distance. We need interaction. Uh, For example, look at all the fellowship words in the book of Philemon. In verse 1, we are fellow laborers. Isn't that an interesting expression? In verse 2, we are fellow soldiers. Uh, In verse 23, we are fellow prisoners. And again in verse 24, we are fellow laborers. Uh, Notice these words. First, we are fellow laborers. What is that? Uh, That means we have a common work. We're in this work together. Our work is God's work. It's the work of getting the gospel out. It's why the Lord Jesus established the church. The church is the vehicle through which the Great Commission is carried out in this world. We're a part of the greatest work on planet Earth. You don't have to find something to do. Just get in on what Jesus is doing. We are laborers together with God. So find your place. Do your part. We are fellow laborers. Then we are fellow soldiers. A fellow laborer means we have a common work and a common master. And fellow soldier means we have a common fight and a common captain. Uh, We are not only working, we are warring. Uh, We have a, a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other. Uh, To use an Old Testament analogy here, we are building and we are battling. Because any time the Lord is at work, the devil's going to fight. So we're in a spiritual conflict, and we're fighting side by side, shoulder to shoulder. It is is a common fight that we have. Uh, We're following the same captain, the captain of our salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is fellowship. And then we are fellow prisoners Watch this. If fellow laborer means we have a common work and master and fellow soldier means we have a common fight and captain, then fellow prisoner means we have a common trial and comforter. We have the same trials. Uh, The same fiery trial tries us all in some way at some time, but praise God, we have the same comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit of God who's been sent to minister deeply to us. Do you see how the church leads you into a certain fellowship? We are in this together. Usually when we say fellowship, everybody immediately thinks of a potluck dinner. Everybody's sitting down to eat, and certainly there is fellowship to food, and we all love it. Uh, But fellowship is more than simply being in the same room or having a meal together. Fellowship is our hearts being knit together for the same great cause. We are fellow laborers, fellow soldiers, and fellow prisoners My dear brother, my dear sister, I just want to remind you today that the church should be in your heart. Whether it meets in your house or not, it should certainly be in your heart because the church was Jesus' idea. And by the way, it was a wonderful idea. And we have the privilege and the responsibility of being a part of it. We're going to learn much more about Philemon, but I love the fact that Philemon understood the importance of the local church. And I want to tell you today, nothing, Uh, Not this broadcast, uh, not any supplementary study, not any other thing you can belong to can take the place of the local New Testament church. Find your place with God's people this week and fellowship with the believers. Thank you for listening. This inspired letter has so much truth for each of us. Ask the Lord to help you live the grace of God and share it with someone else today. Perhaps you could even write a note to a friend and encourage them to keep following Jesus. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org for many more resources and invite someone else to join you as we study together. Until next time, may God richly bless you.